Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today. Welcome to everyone and welcome to those who are with us online. And uh, today, our uh, music director, David, his wife, Judith, they are on a much deserved and needed vacation um, over to what he would refer to as the Holy Land. They're in England. Um, I, I looked for them yesterday during the coronation. I didn't see them, but uh, there are only a few million there, I guess. But anyway, um, David and Judith are away today. Um, and as such, and uh, paraphrasing the words of Bishop Skilton, um, counting on everyone uh, to sing to the Lord con gusto today. Okay? Uh, so let's stand as our service begins. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Welcome to Old St. Andrews. Secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law.
truly to know his everlasting mind, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Would you please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is the Acts lesson, and following our psalm today will be read responsibly. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis, and Apollina, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people in the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason, and the rest, they let them go. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and when they arrived, they went into Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those at Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them were therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica heard what the word of God was being proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul through brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him, as soon as possible, they departed. The word of the Lord. Say to God, how wonderful are your works. Through the grace of thy power, God continues to our lives unto thee. For all the world shall worship you. Sing to thee, praise thy name. O come and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in the tomb of the He turned to the sea, he turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot. The rules, he rules with his power forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Bless our God, you peoples, who holds our soul in life. A 
reading from the first letter of Peter. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you came to him, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves are like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. But where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long? You still do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Christ. in Scripture that can be said to summarize the entirety of the Bible. Uh, one is John 3.16. Um, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Another one would be Romans 1.6. I am not ashamed of the Gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. One such verse that could summarize the Bible is in our Gospel reading today. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is a climax in in the Gospel of John. We could also say that all of John's thought could be contained in that one statement. Consider the first two words, ergo eimi, of I am, the way, the truth, and the life. I am is a declaration by Jesus of his divinity. It goes back to Moses talking to the burning bush. And out of the burning bush uh, comes these words. When Moses asked the question, uh, who should I say sent me to set the Israelites free who were being held captive in Egypt? And the voice said, I am who I am. So when Jesus proclaims seven times in the Gospel of John, I am, like I am the light of the world, but here I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
he is uh, uh, claiming divinity. There are three terms, way, truth, and life, but the central term is way. Uh, and that's because it's in context of what's being said. Uh, Jesus said, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? So Jesus is the way. The other two terms explain how Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way inasmuch as he is the truth and the life. Truth means Jesus is revealer. The way to the Father requires revelation because of our ignorance and blindness. We are all blind and we could not see the light of Christ except he shine it upon us. For grace are you saved through faith. Faith First comes grace. You ever want to convert someone uh, who is an atheist or agnostic or just simply doesn't believe in Christ? Well, you can talk till you're blue in the face and they're not gonna believe unless God reveals himself to that person. And he can certainly use your words to reveal himself. Also, it's not my choice that God revealed himself to me. It's not like I woke up one morning and said, wow, I think I'll be saved today. I think I'll choose Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I can do that over and over. In fact, I did go forward in a Billy Graham crusade in Birmingham, Alabama. I did go forward in a little Baptist church. I go forward as much as I want to go forward, but that's not going to do anything unless God saves me. Put that in your pipe and smoke. <laughs> All right. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. When our rebellion of God, our rebellion against God, separated us from God, uh, we plunged into death. So the way to the Father requires life due to our death. Jesus is not simply one through whom God rescues his people. He's the agent in creation of all of life. As John stated in the first chapter, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The Father has given to Jesus to have life in himself, like God himself, John chapter 5. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. So here Jesus, like God himself, is life. And yet he remains distinct from God and is the way to God. Now at this point in writing this sermon, uh, in researching it, I got very bored. And I thought, this sermon is dry. I need to, you know, put some icing on the cake. So I turned to John Calvin and Martin Luther. Now, I think it's icy. You may find it as boring as the previous remarks I've made. <laughs> but I want you to know this is icy. Because Martin Luther wrote about this verse, that Jesus is essentially saying that he is one Lord, the three in one salvation. He is the beginning, the middle, and the end. One, he is the way to begin. If we wish to go to a destination, we gotta be careful not like the Israelites of old, Martin Luther said, to go around in circles in the wilderness. And if we want to cross the Jordan uh, to the promised land, we must follow the way. 
On the journey, we can expect to find the devil and false teachers, the giants of the land, and they will not leave us alone. Now, I thought that was pretty juicy. Secondly, we need the truth, his teachings and trust, Luther said, to abide in him so that we will not go astray and not walk away from the truth. The truth is the middle between way and life. That's right. The truth is also the middle, the forgiveness of sins, the means of grace, the removal of guilt, uh, or we would not arrive at our destination, and the destination is eternal life. That's the end. John Calvin is similar to Luther. Maybe Calvin read Luther. I don't know. But Calvin says there are three degrees in the process of faith based on this verse, uh, that he's the beginning, the middle, and the end, that we ought to begin with Christ by becoming followers of the way. We ought to continue in Christ by abiding in the truth. And we ought to end in Christ reaching our goal by receiving eternal life. Now for the second half of the verse. This second half of the verse is troubling, it's upsetting, it's scandalous, it's controversial, and a lot of people don't like it. But Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Well, what about all the people that don't believe in Christ? What about all the other religions? You know, that question was asked this past Wednesday at staff meeting. That's when whoever's going to preach uh, sort of lays out what the content's going to be to be corrected, edited, critiqued. <laughs> Belittled. Rebuked? Okay, that's enough of that. But the question was asked by a staff member, what about the other religions? If Jesus is the only way, if it's not inclusive, but being a Christian is exclusive, and the answer was given uh, to refer to John chapter 21, when Jesus in a post-resurrection appearance was with his seven disciples on the beach. And he and Peter were walking on the beach talking. Then it says, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, following them. When Peter saw John, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? In other words, what will happen to him in the future? And Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So that could be an answer for people that want to ask questions. What about other religions? What about other people that maybe heard of Christ but haven't received him? What is that to you? Follow me. Uh, in other words, there's not an answer necessarily that God is going to give us to that question. My understanding has always been in this regard is that if Jesus is the only way to the Father, then it is incumbent upon us in a great degree to follow the Great Commission, which is Go into the world and preach the gospel to all the peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and uh, that they become disciples. So if we're so concerned about another culture that doesn't, that believes in other gods, we should support missionaries to go there and preach the gospel. 
I shouldn't say this, but you know I'm a UFO fan. I like to watch, I mean, if you go to uh, Netflix, there are so many documentaries on UFOs. Did you know that? But anyway, the point is, someone asked the question, what if there is life on another planet and they came here to Earth, what would you tell them about religion? And they said the answer would be they would share with them the gospel. Think about that. <laughs> Judy knows I, I'm into UFO stuff. All right. You know when you interpret scripture, if, the, if your interpretation is based on one verse, it's not a, good, uh, not a good solid way to interpret scripture. But this verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father, but through me, is in several verses all throughout Scripture. Peter, for example, in his first sermon, Acts 4 says, And there is, no, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That was Peter. Paul, 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Also think about this. If there were any other way that we could reach God, then Jesus would not have had to die. So that Jesus is the only way. Uh, it, it sort of incorporates that Jesus had to die for our sins. Because certainly God the Father would not have a son die if there were other religions and other philosophies that led to God. Now, if you want to debate this, I'm sure Father, Va uh, Father Marshall's available. <laughs> And that's all I'll say because my time has run out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we stand as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God.
Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy. For Folly Beach, our Archbishop, Chip Egger, our Bishop, and for Bill Skilton, our Bishop in Residence, for all bishops, priests, deacons, especially for our Rector, Father Marshall, our Assistant to the Rector, Father Joe, our Assisting Priest, Father David, and Father Zach, and our Deacon Emeritus, Lee Hershon, and for our church staff, we also pray for St. Andrew's Mission and their fa vicar, Father Jimmy Gallant, and for Jacob and April Rogers and their family at Neshota Seminary. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, in particular Father Zach Nash, chaplain at Joint Base Charleston, all Saints Church in Florence and their rector, Father Jason Hamshaw, Chelsea and their family, San Jose Church in the Dominican Republic and their rather rector, Father Isaac Pringle Mahaya and their Bishop Moez Casada and Father Rob Sturdy, Anglican Chapel at the Citadel. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Joe Biden, our Governor Henry McMaster, and our Mayor John Tecklenburg, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity, please, particularly those on our parish prayer list and those we name at this time. Ellen Stigbein, Terry Church, Janet Meagrin, and especially on her 91st birthday this past Friday, Julia Adams, are there others? Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in certain hope of resurrection. Especially Greg Rodnicki, Curtis Sponsello. In Thanksgiving, in Thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Sits on the throne of judgment. We humbly beseech thee to bless the members of the South Carolina Supreme Court as they deliberate this final petition filed against us. Give unto them the spirit of wisdom and understanding that they may provide finality to these lawsuits and enable us to continue our mission and ministry here. Guide and direct us as to how best serve and support Camp Jubilee, the parishes who have been displaced. Grant to all of us in our diocese your peace, which truly passes understanding, the reassurance that you are a just and loving God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, grant these and all our prayers. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in love, word, and deed. I will be undone, and I will be undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
for by great mercy had promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. Friends, before we break bread and share the cup of God's people gathered in this beautiful morning, let us take time and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, welcome everyone to Old St. Andrews today. Welcome to our guests who are with us today. Uh, welcome to those worshiping online. If you are visiting with us today, please find the, uh, the welcome card in the pew rack in front of you and fill that out and place that in the offering plate that we might um, include you on parish communications, get to know you a little bit better and you us. Um, today is the first Sunday of the month today and with this month um, we will observe Mission Sunday on the first Sunday of each month and try to make a conscious effort to remember those in our community uh, who are in need um, this is led by our outreach committee and uh, the wagon is out front and has been filled up several times already today so I just commend that to you um, as we seek to reach out to the community around us food items uh, non-perishables uh, toiletries and uh, some clothing. Uh, the list is in the cast net, but uh, this Mission Sunday today, and I'd like to, on the inside of your bulletin cover, um, if you'll look with me, there is a prayer for mission on page two. And I'd ask that you all join with me in, in this prayer for mission now. Uh, at the bottom of the page there, this prayer for the mission of the church. This is our mission. This is always our mission as we seek to follow Jesus, uh, the way, the truth, and the life. So let's pray together, please. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you manifested your love by sending your only begotten Son into the world, that all might live through him. Pour out your Spirit on your church, that we may fulfill his command to preach the gospel to all people. Send forth laborers into your harvest. Defend them in all dangers and temptations and hasten the time when the fullness of the Gentiles shall be gathered in, and faithful Israel shall be saved. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I um, want to pass on a couple of opportunities, uh, actually three of them, um, for those of you who were able to come this morning. 
at 10 o'clock, Father Zach uh, Nash started off his uh, three-week Anglican appetizer series. It was just great. Uh, there are two more sessions. Next Sunday at 10 uh, is the next one, so I commend that to you. Uh, did come a little bit early today. Hey, come on at 10 o'clock next week. That was just a great session. Two more to go. Um, our Bible study on Isaiah Wednesday mornings at 9.30. Gotten off to a great start. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, we are talking about that period of time in the history of Israel, setting the stage for Isaiah's prophecies of the Messiah. So uh, Wednesday at 9.30 is that Isaiah study. And then tomorrow at 12.30 is our second episode of The Chosen. We had uh, over 30 people came and watched The Chosen together, and then we had a fantastic discussion. So I just commend that to you. If you can come uh, tomorrow or any Monday, uh, we're going to be watching The Chosen. Episode 2 is tomorrow. And uh, just commend that to you. That was just a real treat last Monday, and I know will be uh, for you tomorrow as well. Mark your calendar. Uh, Thursday week, 10 days from now. Uh, Thursday the 18th. Actually, that's 11 days, I guess. Uh, Thursday the 18th is Ascension Day, which is how many days after Easter? 40, 40 days, Ascension Day, Ascension Even Song that night. Our Bishop Edgar will be here. Uh, Symphony Quartet will be here, our amazing choir. Uh, so please mark your calendar. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be a fantastic service. Uh, Thursday the 18th at 7 o'clock. As you leave today, uh, Michael and Andrea will have a card, a uh, congratulations card. Uh, Jacob Rogers will be ordained a priest in 10 days on the 17th um, up in Milwaukee uh, at Neshota. And uh, I'll be going up, actually up and back real quick to participate in that ordination. Really excited about that and want to take a congratulations card from you all. That's out front. Please sign that either this Sunday or next Sunday so I can, uh, I can take that with me. After the service today, I hope you'll join us across the way. Uh, Friday was the Cinco de Mayo celebration. Today is the Siete de Mayo celebration, <laughs> the lunch, and you don't want to miss it, so it'll be great. Come on over after, uh, after the service today. And uh, at the time of the offertory now, um, our offertory today will be a hymn, and again, want to invite you all to sing Con Gusto, and uh, David and Judith, I imagine, will be watching. If they're not now, then on delay, so uh, know that they appreciate you all singing. Uh, con gusto, as Bishop Skilton likes to say. So, walk in love now as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. And a reminder to our guests, this is God's table. All that Christians, regardless of your denomination, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion here at Old Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs>
the victory and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom of Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right, our duty, and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night he was had betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We offer you these gifts Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. Well, this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, in the words our Lord taught us, we are bold to sing. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep peace. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is all.
join in the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us.
now begins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Have a blessed day.